Hey everybody, Ben here from the Bonehead Podcast and welcome to Dwarf Team Development. We are looking at all the teams in Blood Bowl 2020, whether they are in the rulebook or in the Teams of Legend PDF. We've done starting rosters for leagues, we've done tournament rosters, now we are going to look at skills for each of the players. So we are going to do this thinking about league, thinking about what skills, what order, on what player is going to help your team and today we are looking at Dwarves. first player we're going to look at on the dwarf lineup is the dwarf runner so the dwarf runner comes in at 85,000 movement six strength three agility three plus which is one of the better agilities on the dwarf team uh, passing four plus which isn't bad not as good as it used to be it did get worse but most things got worse in blood bowl 2020 when you think about passing uh, armor 9 plus and um, comes with sure hands thick skull general and passing as skills and agility and strength on doubles or secondary skills so having one dwarf runner in your team is very useful agility 3 plus is only available on the two runners you get and the two blitzers so that 3 plus coming with sure hands means your dwarf runner is primarily going to be the guy who starts with the ball and that also means that whenever you get a chance to pick up the ball, if you're late in the game, you may have run out of re-rolls. That is going to come in handy massively. So when we look at what you want to develop him for, you're looking to develop him as a runner, which makes sense because he's called the Dwarf Runner. And what I mean by that is he's going to be your primary ball carrier. Sure hands that he already starts with is going to be massively effective against the strip ball skill, which will come later in your leagues from your opponents. So... The first skill is not going to surprise anybody here, starting off with block. We'll get this guy, he'll keep him so much safer, um, and also it means that when the dwarf gets into combat, because every dwarf gets into combat because that movement, although movement 6 is pretty fast as far as dwarves are concerned, having block is going to keep him safe when he's got the ball and it's going to make him a useful blitzer as well, because agility 3 plus, movement 6, Coming with block and armor 9, he becomes a blitzer, and that will help your team massively. So, some other skills you can consider on the ball might be one you think about. Personally, block is the safest way to go, but if you want to skip that and just go straight for on the ball, what that means is that when you receive, your dude's going to be able to move three squares before that ball lands, which is kind of going to save you half a turn when it comes to the dwarf runner. So it's definitely one to consider. Block is the better way to take it. But if you want to go straight for a ball control, you can go on the ball. Nerves of Steel is going to help with your passing of 3+. plus. Not often going to be passing on the Dwarf team, but Nerves of Steel and Accurate is going to make this guy 2+, plus passing forever. If that's what you want to do. I know there is a subset of Dwarf coaches who are pretty ardently... Um, <laughs> entrenched in the dwarf passing game and the runner is going to be able to do it nerves of steel accurate comes to a total of 14 spp that's five touchdowns let's say you win the 2-1 grind most regularly that's probably i don't know four five games with the dwarf runner and you could have a two plus passer there you go that will keep you entertained um other better skills however block um, you can save up and take dodge on a double. Now, again, that's going to defend you from a ball carrying point of view and also 3 plus dodging away. If that is your option, well, it's only a 1 in 9 chance of definitely failing. So it's definitely something to consider as well. Taking block after 6 SP, P, then saving up 14 for dodge could be really useful. Break tackle is going to mean that you can dodge away once per turn on a 2 plus instead. So if you've got enough rerolls, break tackle might be a better way to go. The Dwarf Runner is going to be one of those players that's actually quite versatile when it comes to where you want it, where you want to go with it. Block is going to help you most of the time, but actually, if you want to splash out and save up with the Dwarf Runner, you can create a pretty unique player. Now, we do need to talk about stats. Um, it's a long way to go for Dwarf Runners to save up for stats. We, uh, we talked about... Um, saving up for your second skill it's going to be quite a long way and saving up 18 if your very first stat increase is going to be uh it's going to be a tough challenge and the reason for that is because the reward almost over half the time is just going to be a movement seven runner that was cool when it was a random roll and that's what was happening after your first skill but would you rather have a movement seven dwarf runner or a block 
on the ball dwarf runner you know there's a lot of other stuff you can do um, agility is a great improvement though passing is quite a fun improvement probably not going to be optimal and strength is very good as well so it might be that one of your dwarf runners goes the classic way of getting block then maybe saving up for a double your other dwarf runner may just start off and you may have committed to running with this way um, making the roll and then turning your plus one movement into dodge instead and the only other three plus agility piece on your team is the dwarf blitzer now dwarf blitzers are great little players as well so the blitzers are 80,000 movement five strength three agility three plus passing four plus so these guys are passing as well as your runners uh, armor 10 plus now these guys have got some serious defense block and thick skull so they are combat heavy uh, primary skills general and strength so they've got solid movement solid movement they've got subpar movement but they've got solid armor and thick skull as well it means that the dwarf blitzer is going to be kept around forever which makes it a very effective brawler now, where it is 3 plus agility, this makes your blitzers just as good at maneuvering the ball as your runners. So these guys kind of end up being your secondary ball carriers. They already start with block, which makes them great for that. So some of the other skills you get really focus more on their combat power. So having guard on a dwarf blitzer is very effective. They've got five movement, which is faster than your blockers. They've got three plus agility, which means they can dodge away as well. A pair of dwarf blitzers is a very fine thing. The other thing to be aware of is that a dwarf blitzer will come to the uh, will come to the troll slayer, but taking guard on your blitzer means that a blitzer and a slayer can hunt in a pack, only at five squares of movement. But actually, you tag the target, slayer comes in afterwards, guard means that wherever you strike you're going to get that plus one and that's going to be so useful the other angle to take is to go straight for mighty blow you kind of got the classic hammer and anvil here with your dwarf team your linemen are always going to be the anvil they're the ones who are going to be guarding all the time but when you've got a bit of mobility with the dwarf blitzer you can afford to take mighty blow and use him as the hammer or guard i would probably go one and one with the blitzers at just guard is great on this team it helps with the control game, but you do need some mighty blow pieces to start making those removals as well. So tackle, very useful. You've got a lot of guys who have tackle anyway, but actually as a secondary skill, it becomes very useful on your blitzer because they become great safeties. Frenzy as well is definitely something worth considering. You do have the slayers, but if you develop your guard game on this team to be strong enough, there's nothing wrong with one of your dwarf blitzers becoming a heavily armored troll slayer. At Dauntless as well if you want to go for that proper Slayer life. Saving up and getting Dodge on the Dwarf Blitzer to be a bl to be a blodger is something that's really worth considering now the way we've bought now the way we do skills has changed. Um, do you need guard on your Dwarf Blitzer as quickly as possible? Probably not. You can probably go a few games without guard. So it is really worth thinking when you get to 6SPP do I want to just save for two more touchdowns and make him a blodger? Because while it is not the most important thing when you are movement 5, agility 3+, plus, the dwarf blitzer is going to become one of your ball carriers. It's also going to be your primary blitzing piece. So having dodge for maneuverability and also to stay alive is going to mean this blitzer is going to be sticking around. So if you want to save to 12, dodge is going to be great on this piece. If you don't want to save to 12, Guard or Mighty Blow is really just going to start piling on the pressure against your opponent. Stats wise, Movement 6 is not much better than Movement 5. Agility 2 plus is very good in a Blitzer and Strength 4 is also tasty as heck. But by that point, you've basically taken Guard and Dodge. So, mm, not ideal. But if you don't want to blitz with the blitzer, you can always blitz with a troll slayer. So you will probably end up with one or two troll slayers on your dwarf team. You may even be starting out with them. Um, they come with block, they come with frenzy, they come with dauntless, and they come with thick skull. They are only armor 8 plus, which is as soft as dwarf gets, really. They're movement 5, strength 3, agility 4 plus, uh, no passing, and... Um, general and strength with agility as double so the troll slayer becomes a very effective hammer against the anvil of whatever the heck you want to put him against it also because movement five in the 
open is reasonable. That's 11 squares you're covering without any go for it. So that's the majority of the backfield. So a troll slayer can play a reasonable safety and giving it frenzy, not giving it frenzy, but given that it has frenzy, it means that you're going to have two attempts to take something out. Straight away, when you get a level up with the Trolls there, giving them Mighty Blow because they are Frenzy Block already. They're going to be taking two shots to punch someone down to the ground. Mighty Blow is just going to help make them more effective. Alternatively, we've got a whole bunch of skills here that actually work really well on the Trolls there. I think Mighty Blow is probably the best way to go first, but Stand Firm will very much help you um, stay out of trouble on the sideline with Frenzy tackle if you are going to be using your troll slayer as a safety depending on the rest of your team and the rest of your league tackle is going to help frenzy tackle block smashing some face guard as well we talked about it in the blitzer and basically everything we said about the blitzer is going to be uh, the same thing here with the troll slayer if you've got two blitzers you've got two troll slayers two of those guys need to have guard and they need to work together you can pair up a guard troll slayer with another troll slayer and just <laughs> double guard them and just have like a little frenzy mosh bit definitely worth considering i would probably hold off guard from a troll slayer uh, i'd probably focus on these guys doing the murdering so mighty blow will be really useful and a blitzer taking guard and just hunting in two packs um strip ball is going to be useful as your league develops as well because if you can get a troll slayer onto the ball carrier it's going to get two shots of punching him down and uh, strip ball is going to help you with that Talking about removal for the trolls there, you give them Mighty Blow, they've got Frenzy, they've got two, two attempts to take somebody out. Pile Driver um, is an interesting one. So Dwarf teams are going to want to reasonably shy away from fouling unless it's really worth it because their players are very vulnerable. You're only going to end up with 12 um, and losing a guy is going to be tough. There's always the option to uh, to foul a war dancer. That's never a bad thing. But when it comes to the pile driver skill, what it's going to allow you to do is frenzy block, frenzy block, mighty blow. If he's not dead, you can jump on and foul immediately. That will make your troll slayer a 100%. That is exaggerated, but it will increase the uh, the likelihood of your troll slayer actually being able to do some removal. Now. If you want to save up for a double skill, dodge is never going to be bad, a blodge piece is never going to be bad, and sidestep also becomes very useful as a frenzy piece. Uh, it's kind of like the agility version of stand firm. You've got an opportunity to maneuver yourself where you want to go, uh, however they can catch you still on the edge of the pitch. Stat ups, movement 6, not great. Strength 4, however, is fantastic, and an agility boost to a troll slayer kind of medium it's a long way to go to save up but i think with a lot of these dwarf players what we're going to see is take one skill at the point where they get one extra skill the team starts really cooking think about it runner with block lovely blitzer with guard very lovely trolls there with mighty blow that all starts to work really nice your linemen get guard that's one skill a piece after that feel free to just save spp <laughs> feel free to just save spp save your team value and then go blodge with everybody or make those rolls for random skills that i think is going to be something that that potentially happens with dwarf teams um and the troll slayer having a shot at strength four would be fantastic everything else is a little subpar but it might not be the worst thing in the world to have a shot at it failing and becoming a blodge slayer that's all right so we just touched on the Dwarf Blocker. At the Dwarf Blocker is your lineman. It is already a fantastic piece at 70k. Movement 4 is rubbish, but it's all it seems to need. Um, strength 3, Agility 4+, plus, Passing 5+, plus, Armor 10+, plus, Block, Tackle, Fix, Skull, General and Strength on a Primary. The Dwarf Blocker does a very good job. Um, really, Guard is the first thing you want to put on these guys. So movement four makes them not very effective at being a support piece for another. However, having a line of dwarf blockers with guard is going to make you lose friends. Uh, once you can smatter in a couple of guys with mighty blow, but actually what I really do recommend with your dwarf blockers is focus on almost all of them getting guard uh, because that allows you to have some flexibility to strike in with your mighty blow pieces. For example, the slayer or the blitzers, depending on what you do. Being able to pile in 
on those and just focusing your dwarf blockers on getting casualties, getting guard, because if you've got guard and your friend's got guard, you're both going to have a better shot at getting two dice, and two dice means more casualties. And more casualties means more SPP. So then you can get guard and mighty blow, and then you're just having an absolutely superb time. If you want to get saucy with a blocker, though, you've got frenzy, you've got dauntless, you've got kick, you've got grab. Those are some skills that would not be bad on a blocker probably wouldn't worry about kick too much because your blockers want to be on the line so guard first mighty blow will start plowing through your opponents grab instead could be useful to help dominate that line of scrimmage if you want to save some skills giving a blodge uh, having a block and dodge blocker with guard is going to be massively 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 difficult to put down and that's just going to increase your 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 kind of unstoppability when it comes to dominating the line um spp it's gonna be a while to save up for but quite frankly once they've got guard they are really good already so you can afford like we just said to just slowly brew up spp before you make any decisions um you've got to watch your team value though so taking a double skill is now 40k um so it's definitely something to consider I love Dwarf Blockers getting guard, and I think that's just going to absolutely set the team on fire. And last, but definitely not least, we've got the Death Roller. So the Death Roller, bless its little heart, got more expensive. Uh, it went up to 170,000 gold pieces, almost making the Death Roller unplayable. Uh, movement 4, Strength 7. Strength 7 is pretty good, though. Agility 5 plus means it's not going anywhere ever. Uh, passing Dash, Armor 11 plus means it's not getting off the table ever. Break Tackle means that it's moving once per turn with Agility 3 plus, which is not as great as it could be. Uh, dirty Player plus 2 means that if you want to foul with a Death Roller, you're going to have a great time. Juggernaut means that it blitzes phenomenally well, having a single blitz at 3 dice. Juggernaut's going to help. Loner 5 plus is very bad, so you want to maximize the blocks with the Death Roller. Mighty Blow plus 1 is going to do some great work. No hands, fair enough. Secret Weapon and Stand Firm. So Stand Firm is going to be useful, but Secret Weapon means that this 170,000k investment in your team is gone at the end of the drive. So let's look at some skills that you can use to maximize it. So it's only getting strength on a general. Brawler is going to help that 3 die block be more effective. You don't want to use a reroll because it's low in a 5+. Plus. Brawler is going to allow you to reroll one of those both downs. However, saving up for block is going to be significantly better. Pile driver would be the next skill I would recommend considering. And the reason for that is you 3 die block somebody. They go down. Your mighty blow doesn't work. Then you pile drive them with dirty player plus 2. And if you get foul sent off, if you get sent off because of the foul, it doesn't matter anyway because you were gone at the end of the drive because you got secret weapon. I would probably switch this around and go straight for pile driver first because it's going to maximize the impact of that death roller. Sure, when it's on the ground, it's going to struggle to get up again, but it is movement four, so you've got the opportunity to blitz one thing. Um, some other great skills, multiple block. Because you are strength seven, that's two strength five blocks. You are going to be able to block him with two dice, him with two dice, if only you were on a team with guard. There's a very good chance you've got a couple of guard pieces next door to you. You could still be doing two three die blocks a turn. That's fantastic. Grab is worth considering. Guard itself is maybe all right on the death roller, but really you need to make that 170k work. And if you can go mighty blow plus one, foul at plus two, regardless of what's going on, that death roller is going to remove whatever the heck it knocks to the ground. However, if you really want to go deep, Frenzy is going to be awesome on the Death Roller. You're going to get probably a 3 die block followed by a 2 die block. And if you've got Bolt oh, if you've got Pile Driver, it just starts destroying stuff. So I would say Pile Driver first, then take Frenzy or save up for Frenzy first and just make the most of those blocks. Ultimately, though, the Death Roller is gone at the end of the drive, and Dwarf teams don't often have enough cash to have spare bribes lying around. So if you're going to take a Roller, Go with Pile Driver and just really make it count. So when it comes to Dwarf teams, their players only really need one skill. And we talked about this a second ago, that actually when you get that one skill, you can stop rushing. You can stop rushing your SPP and you can start saving up. And you can see how your league develops. You can see 
when things are needed. If that Blitzer needs tackle because you're struggling with a lot of dodge in the league, if you need extra Mighty Blow, if you need an extra Guard, if you need extra Guard because there's a lot of Black Orcs, I imagine most leagues are going to be quite Black Hawk heavy this time. Um, you will need that extra strength. You need that. Extra, you can develop your team. It's okay to play a few games where you've got SPPs banked for your players because dwarves are solid as you like. So being able to just wait to see what it is you need in your league is absolutely fine to do. And if by that time you're only a few SPP away from taking a double or from taking a random skill roll, what have you got to lose? If you want to wait two extra touchdowns and and take that skill and take that strength roll and just see if you get strength, if it doesn't, you end up with dodge. You're gonna love it. Black orcs with dodge were great in Blood Bowl 2016, and any kind of uh, dwarf with dodge is going to be really useful as well. And if it's on a blocker, I wouldn't probably recommend going for a stat increase on a blocker. But the slayers, the runners, the blitzers. Once they've got their first level up, you can start being inspired with them. And I think that's at which the point dwarf teams are going to start creating their own identity. And that is very exciting to me. So, I have convinced myself that I like the idea of a dwarf team in League. I'm on board with this idea because I don't think until I started recording this video, I appreciated just how much design space they have after that first bump. You're not giving up anything by considering it. That is actually really cool. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up this video now, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you think of dwarf teams and skills in this video because I am intrigued. This is going to be a good conversation. And uh, I'll be back again soon with some more Blood Bowl content. Thanks for watching.